I could see my uh, VTC uh, 1 and 2 is a little bizarre. I may investigate that. Um, I, like I said, I haven't had this one running before. So I w all I was messing with was the uh, VVEL system. The guy had taken the ladder system out, hadn't uh, synchronized it to the stepper motor and done a bunch of other wacky stuff and uh, burned up his mo VVL module. Um, this uh, VTC advance lack of synchronization a lot of times, um, that can be some worn seals in the uh, VTC covers. Uh, stuff like that um, sometimes just a uh, debris or um, you know any kind of an obstruction that's going to go to that actual uh, solenoid see it advances but it doesn't advance like I want it to but yeah so that's uh, kind of typical of what you would normally see if one's running All right, I figure I'd make a quick video just to, you know, kind of generally explain some of the stuff about the uh, VTC and BVEL systems on the VQ37 VHR. Just to simplify it for some people, it gets super complex. So, I mean, we can we can go super deep with this. So, just general component identification. So, um, this is your Bank 1 uh, VTC cover, Bank 2 VTC cover. You can see on each side, you have... VTC cam sensors. Now those cam sensors, um, they actually are mag pickup off of an encoder wheel that's on the intake sprocket. So that's how that system works. Okay. So that's your cam timing. All right. Anything to do with the VVEL is all in the back. And the reason I say that is because the, um, the, the lift and the duration of the intake system. Now, mind you, the VVEL and VTC is only intake. There's nothing to do with your exhaust sprocket or exhaust camshaft. It's a standard camshaft, just like anything else you'd see. So the computer um, sends a signal, multiple signals through a CAN circuit to your VVEL module. And what that does is uh, those stepper motors in the back, you have one on each side, they actually control the, the lift and the duration of the intake valve, okay? Now, you're like, well, what's the VTC system? VTC is very similar to the old school 300ZXs, um, you know, older Nissans and stuff. And what it is, is it's, a, um, it's an intake sprocket system that will hydraulically lock up with oil pressure to allow you to retard or advance the center line of the camshaft. Now, that's important because you can have a lot of failures from this system. From this gasket, this gasket can fail you. Back there, that can fail. Um, also, here's just an old cover. You got a few things going on. So there's your cam sensor. Now your sprocket has that encoder wheel that's picking up cam signal. Some of the earlier ones, the encoder wheel will physically slip mechanically inside the intake sprocket. That'll cause you to have a no start system or a, a misfire situation. So you can see that you have multiple passages through here. So this is your VTC uh, solenoid, uh, like a VTEC solenoid. And this thing has a plunger and it will move back and forth right there. And it will modulate oil pressure coming in and out of this part. So you can see that this has three triple dynamic seals on this shaft, and this shaft, it gets inserted into the intake sprocket. And what that'll allow it to do, so everyone wants to know the magic behind how this works, I've got a diagram right here somewhere. Here you go. And you can take a screenshot of that. But you see, it shows you all of the oil passages that go through the cover, and you can see how they go into the actual sprocket themselves right there. That's where the oil passages actually go in. So that's why those triple dynamic seals are so important. Um, and of course, guys that um, mill their uh, cylinder heads or deck their block too much can have geometry problems because that actual control shaft cover shaft that has the hydraulic um, passages for the dynamic seals will bind inside the intake sprocket. But you can see that inside the intake sprocket, is uh, oil passages and a crucible style lockup mechanism that allows the camshaft to advance or retard. So that's pretty cool, right? You can see the passages on the solenoid itself.
All right, so moving on. So I always talk about how these camshafts, the uh, control cam for the VVEL stepper motor has to be degreed. You can see that from the factory, it has this, it's about three millimeter right there. I think as I was putting feeler gauges on it, but you can't go by that. You have to go by another measurement that I've done. So the actual stepper motor itself, if you're to measure from the end of that plunger to the inner casting of the actual stepper motor itself, that's supposed to be 1.585 inches, okay? So that's with having the hardware, these two Allen heads, they're six millimeter, having those loose, okay? And then um, rotating the motor, putting it into multiple positions. I've made other videos about this, but if you don't have this fundamental mechanically of um, how the VVL system works. Let's say you had to take off your tower system to re-liquid seal it because you had a leaking uh, spark plug hole. Um, you changed out your exhaust camshafts. Uh, you had the VVL uh, motors replaced, blah, blah, blah. You have to do this. If you don't do this, it'll never work in any configuration. You can bolt that back together all day and it'll never work. You'll never get the, um, you'll never get the sensors itself within range leading me to the sensors. So sorry about how dirty this page is. You can see, you got the sensors. You can see that you can clock them back and forth. Okay, now what you're going for is uh, 0.5, uh, let's see, 0.5 millivolts. So um, I use ECU tech to do this. So you can see that the, uh, the instruction, they work exactly like this. So it's not that big of a deal. If you have ECU tech, all you do with the, uh, the car in a, a, an off position, you go ahead and you um, disconnect the VVL sensors, both sides, remove the VVL relay, which is right there, okay? You do that, then you're gonna put the car into a key on position, five seconds, turn it off, reconnect those harnesses. Now, mind you, I hope you have your 10 millimeters loosened on the back of the VVL sensor itself, okay? So, um, reconnect all that, put the, uh, the relay back in, turn the ignition on, and at this point you should already have your Bluetooth uh, ECU tech interacting in uh, live data so that I can see it. And then what you're going to do is uh, dial in bank one, bank two, um, VVEL motor control to uh, 0.5 volts. And uh, that's, that's really it, man. And once you do that, key off, and uh, you're dialed in.